boy, oh boy, I'm excited for class. Mom says I get to pet the teacher today. I love doing that. Today we're talking about... Oh, teacher, teacher, hello, hello, it's Johnny. Johnny knows, ask Johnny, ask Johnny. I haven't even said what the lesson is about today. Besides, we like people who put up their hands oh, and then wait until oh. they're asked before they speak. I got my hand up. I got my hand up. Johnny, you oh. still don't know what the lesson oh. is about today. It doesn't matter. Johnny's very smart. Ask Johnny anything. You'll see how smart Johnny is. Okay, I give in today. We're, we're going to talk, talk about, about ice cream. Ice cream. We're going to talk about ice cream. Now, ha whenever have we had a Sunday school lesson about ice cream? Well, never. But this is a great time to start, don't you think? We'll do it today. Today, we're going to be teaching about something much more important than ice cream. Today we're talking about being a friend of God. Oh, but Johnny wishes we were talking about ice cream. Or maybe, 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 teacher, maybe we could talk about hamburgers. No, but it doesn't matter. Uh, I know how to be a friend of God. I well, know, I know. Well, that's great, Johnny. Perhaps you can tell the kids here a bit about oh, it. Of course, teacher, ma'am, of course. Johnny, we'll just go get ready. Don't we'll just go get ready. Where are you going? Johnny, what are you doing down there? Oh, Johnny, this is kind of an unusual practice. I'm coming, teacher. What's, what on earth are you doing? I'm just going to oh, show you I can swim. What are you doing, Johnny? I'm swimming. I'm being a fish, Miss Teacher. I'm being a fish. Can you tell me why you're being a fish? Oh, yeah. We saw a sticker on somebody's car. It was Mom said it was a Jesus fish. So I'm sure to be a friend of God, you want to be like a fish. Well, that's great that you want to be God's friend, but the fish sticker isn't mean that you're God's friend. Oh, okay. No, it's no problem. I know. I know another thing. I know. I know what it means to be God's friend. Well, I guess it's kind of hard to breathe underwater, so that's good. Hey. Oh, uh, what on earth are you doing now? Tweet, 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 tweet. Oh yeah. Tweet, 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 tweet. Well, tweet. I don't really want to, but I guess I should ask. Why are you tweeting and a feather in your hair? Oh, I lost my feather. Oh, that's okay. Oh, I'm just being a sparrow. I know. Uh, it says in the Bible. I I heard it one time that that God knows even if a sparrow falls to the ground. So if he's a friend with a sparrow like that. God must want me to be like a sparrow. Yeah. Tweet, 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 tweet. Well, Johnny, that's tweet, still tweet. not right. Let me tell you how to be God's friend. No, no, Miss Teacher, ma'am. No, no, no. Johnny's very smart. I got, I got I got one more try. I'm very clever. I know how to do it. Okay. Well, I hope this is a better idea than the last two. This is great. This is the right way. I know it. Yeah. Okay. So tell us why do you have a wig on? Because we sure can't figure it out. Oh, I read somewhere. Grandma said that God cares so much that he knows about every hair on my head. And Johnny really wants for God to pay lots of attention to him. So the more hairs I get on my head, oh, they're falling out. Oh, no. Johnny, you what can't am I trying to do? God by putting a wig on your head. He knows how many hairs you have, really have on your head underneath the wig. God can't be fooled by anything we do anyway. Oh, teacher man. No, no, this is terrible. No, Johnny's running out of ideas. How can I be God's friend? It seems so very, very hard. Well, first, you need to get your information from the Bible and from your teachers at church. Oh. You can't learn the truth about God from a bumper sticker, a cereal box, or a library book. Oh. Second, God loves everyone just the way they are. He doesn't worry what you look like, what clothes you wear, what language you speak, or what color your skin is. And you don't need goggles, feathers, wigs, or anything else to impress God. He already loves you and wants to be your friend. Oh, so what does Johnny need to do to be God's friend? Johnny wants to be God's friend, but now I'm not knowing what to do. Oh, are you going to help Johnny learn this? Yes, Johnny. To be God's friend, all you need to do is pray and ask him to be your friend. Jesus died for all the bad things that you've done, so instead of you being punished, Jesus was punished instead. And all you have to do is accept that gift that he has given you. Oh, I'd like to do that, teacher. I'd like to do that. Can you pray for me? I would be happy to pray for you, Johnny. Oh, good. Oh, thank you, teacher. Thank you so much. Now I gotta go tell and all my happy friends. Sunday. I hope you're having a good day so far. So I am here today to tell you your Bible story again, um, your Sunday school lesson. And it's another one about one of the miracles that Jesus performed when he was here on earth. Um, this one is about him helping someone that had been sick for a very long time and was really discouraged already in his sickness. So it's it's a really good one. Um, have you ever been and the to the doctor's office with your mom or dad and what happened when you got there you had to 
most likely wait in the waiting room, right? Um, you had to wait till it was your turn to see the doctor. Um, that's kind of what this story is about. Um, someone that had to wait their turn to be, no, not to see the doctor, but to be healed and to get well. Um, so in Jerusalem, there was a big pool named Bethesda that had like five porches around it. So, oh, I gotta show you the picture. Um, there you go. There's the, the pool and it had porches around it. And it, these porches were always filled with people, um, like just all sorts of people, moms and dads and grandpas and grandmas. There's children, aunts and uncles, all sorts of people on this porch. Um, some of them couldn't walk some couldn't see, some couldn't hear. Um, they were all sick with something. There was all, something wrong with all of them. Um, but why, why were they at this pool? Why were they waiting? Or yeah, why were they on these porches um, at the pool? Um, and the answer is that people believed that an angel came down and stirred the waters of the pool once every day. And the first person, only the first person to get into the pool when it stirred and it bubbled um, would be made well. So they would be healed from whatever was causing them to be sick. Um, but you had to move really, really fast to get into the water first, right? Because it was only the first person. So the people that couldn't walk or were really, really sick, um, didn't really have a chance because they couldn't move fast enough to get into the water. Um, they needed a friend to help them or they just, they, they just were stuck. It was always the first person, right? The person that, was, that got into the water the fastest. So today's story is about this man right here. He hasn't been able to walk for a very long time, for 38 years. That's quite a long time. He hasn't been able to walk, but he's at this pool. He's waiting. He has no friends to help him into the water. So he's never fast enough um, to get into the water to be healed. And he's getting really sad and discouraged because it's been such a long time of waiting. Um, but today is a really good day for him because Jesus comes to the pool and he walks over to this man. He knows about this man because Jesus, Jesus knows all things, right? So he knows about this man. He knows that he's been waiting a very long time to be healed um, and that he can't walk and has no friends to help him into the pool when it stirs. So Jesus goes over to him and he asks him, would you like to be made well? Would you like to be healed? Do you think the man wants to be healed? <laughs> I think so, right? He's been waiting a long time to be healed and he says, yes, but I have no friends. I can't walk and I have no friends to help me into, into the pool when it stirs. So I am never fast enough. Um, so Jesus knew. Jesus knew about this man. He knew that this man needed a friend and he was going to be that friend because he loves, he loves this man just like he loves all of us so much, right? So Jesus says to him, stand up, roll up your mat and walk told you it was a good day for this man. So Jesus didn't help him into the pool. Jesus just told him to stand up and walk. So just by Jesus speaking that, the man was made well and he was able to walk. So Jesus did another miracle, right? This this man probably didn't didn't think this was ever going to happen for him, but Jesus performed a miracle and Jesus can perform miracles because he is God, right? Only God can perform miracles, but since Jesus is God, he can perform miracles. Um, and the amazing part about this is that this man did not go looking for Jesus. He didn't hear about Jesus, this man that does miracles and that helps people that are sick. He didn't, he didn't go searching for Jesus. He couldn't even, even if he had heard of Jesus, right? He couldn't walk. Jesus came to him and he found him and helped him and was his friend. And he does the same for us. He is always looking out for us even when maybe we're not searching for him. He is looking out for us um, in the same way that he looked out for this man and helped this man. Later, Jesus meets this man again, or this man meets Jesus again at the temple. So this man didn't even know who had helped him. He didn't know who, who had been this man that had healed him, but he met him at the temple and that's when he knew that it had been Jesus that had helped him. Um, and this man was super happy to be healed and he was telling everyone that it was Jesus that healed him. Um, but there's other people 
that weren't weren't so happy about this um because jesus had healed this man on the sabbath and to them the sabbath was the seventh day of the week it was a special day for them to rest and not do anything else and so they were angry that jesus had helped this man on the sabbath but jesus tells them that god always does good and he is doing what god had asked him to do so god had asked him to heal this man and so that is what he did he did a really good thing he did what was right jesus always did what was right um and he was this man's friend and he helped him just like he is our friend and he helps us when we need um so yeah that's today's story um let's pray and then we'll be all done Thank you, Jesus, so much for this story. Thank you for being this man's friend. Thank you that you are our friend and you help us and we can ask you anytime we need, anytime we are in trouble or hurting, um, we can always go to you and you help us and you are our friend and we thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Have a good day, everyone.